If you get somebody in that has a problem uh, that presents, uh, just before we get to the actual chemistries involved, sometimes it's hard to get them into a scanner, correct? We actually had studies done on this, and uh, there was increased um, morbidity and complications in all sorts of procedures and treatments uh, for patients who were uh, obese. Sometimes uh, the CAT scan table wouldn't be able to support their weight. The gear wheels wouldn't move. We couldn't actually move the bed into the scanner. Um, and then doing procedures, trying to get IV access. Um, God forbid there's a cardiac arrest. It's working on these patients, very large, very, very heavy patients, had its own set of difficulties and complications that made their re end results not as favorable. There's a longitudinal study um, that uh, from Oxford University that indicates that obese patients, 50 pounds, for example, uh, it on average takes three years off of their lifespan. Morbidly obese people, uh, category three, uh, 100 pounds or more, can take as much as 10 years off of their lifespan. It's actually uh, comparable to smoking. I personally used to live in a smaller body and I was very unhealthy. I had really bad blood tests. I, I, was, I was vitamin deficient. I was losing my hair. My nails were chipping. My skin was dry. I, I was very, I was very unhealthy. But you had an eating disorder, right? Sure. You but were I was anorexic and bulimic. That can kill you. My point is that when I'm talking about fat positivity and when I'm talking about not being able to look at someone and instantly know their medical history, this is what I'm talking about. You don't know if the 400 pound person you're looking at used to be 500 pounds. You don't know if the 290 pound person you're looking at before you used to have an eating disorder and is now so much healthier than before. Would you agree that being obese or being morbidly obese puts you at risk for diseases at a higher level than if you were at a lesser weight and everything else was constant? I would disagree with you. From my personal experience, and from what I know, working in the body positivity movement for the past few years so and hearing would, other people's accounts. So you would reject the science based on I anecdotal. am not rejecting science. Because I am the challenging science, what the current you science says that you are seven times uh, higher risk for diabetes, uh, certain kinds of cancer, sleep apnea, six times higher for high blood pressure, four times higher for arthritis, three times higher for asthma, uh, uh, that you're higher risk for high cholesterol, inflammation, coronary artery disease, and if you have high blood pressure, you're two to 300% uh, more at risk for a stroke. I have none of those issues. I have no indicators of those issues being anywhere on the horizon. I am perfectly healthy. Even if I weren't, I'm obviously still entitled to dignity and respect, oh, which, is, which is my main pillar of belief and what I talk about most often. Despite what you believe the science to reflect, you are very obviously rejecting the truth, which is that there is science that opposes that belief there are so many scientists and so many doctors who are middle-aged white men. And my body is very <coughs> different. <laughs> thank you Not for, that there's anything wrong with thank it. Thank you for calling me middle-aged. <laughs> <laughs> very You're sweet welcome. of you. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.